What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome to a review. Decided we're gonna start doing reviews because I need, there's always a lot of things that I need to get off my chest that I never do and I have to hold it into the stream. So fuck it, we're just gonna talk about it here. Chelsea nil, Manchester City one. I mean, it's not as bad as we thought it would be, but we're still now 10 points off fourth. We're looking further and further away from getting into the top four race, which to be honest, I never thought we were gonna get into either. But I guess there's positives to take from it, I, I guess. But even then, when we talk about it, it's like, look how far we dropped as a football club. That now we're okay with the fact that we're losing 1-0 just because it wasn't more than that. Let's get into it. Before I get into it, as always, though, big up everyone that's locked in. Like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, check out Jerseys FC. Links down in the description below for all your best affordable football shirts. And use the code CAREFREELEWISG for 20% off. Also, don't forget to check out Flawless's tune down in the description below. Yes, it is 2023, but we're still promoing it, so check it out. And yeah, let's get into it. Chelsea nil, Manchester City won. I thought we were getting absolutely whitewashed within the first 20 minutes. And to be honest, we hung on. And as the first 10 minutes started to go, and then the first 20, 30, I slowly started to build hope. Silly me, eh? But uh, the way we were playing, we set up well. Like, credit to Graham Potter, because Potter is the first one to get slandered. I actually thought he set us up really well defensively. And that set us up with a good base to try and move forward. And because Man City, you know the way they always like to play. They like to play with 11 men in the box. They play with a high line and they like to just dominate possession. But when you can hold them off defensively, it allows you to try and be able to push the ball forward faster. And we were actually doing well as a result of that. We were transitioning the ball well. We were making a couple chances. Even in spite of the early injuries to Pulisic and Sterling, which I really hope aren't serious because that's they are our only direct wingers and our only consistent chance creators and they're going to be gone. But we have to wait and see on that. But even in spite of that, we did find the ball in good spaces. We were able to transition the ball well. It's just... The final ball always seems to let us down. There was players that had good performances in some areas, players that had bad performances in some areas. But at the end of it, it was just a case of tunnel vision or just being unlucky. Chukumeka had a great chance, hit the post. I, he didn't expect to be start to coming off the uh, to be coming off the pitch and playing that long. But he came into the game and he was fearless. He was actually fearless. He was commanding when he was on the ball he was asking questions to the center backs very unlucky not to score it was a very promising performance for him and i do want to see him get more minutes in the premier league after a performance like that another person i want to talk about kula bali i think it was very smart from potter not to pair him with aspel equator this time and to put him on the left hand side and he looked a lot more comfortable i thought he looked a lot more composed there were some great blocks from him did his job a lot more superbly. He didn't look anywhere near as shaky as he did in the ball, in the game against Forest. Kovacic and Zakaria, unbelievable pivot, by the way. I might have to start seeing more of that. Maybe it was because of the way that, that Manchester City were playing, but I don't want to take it away from the pair of them because they did such a great job. Zakaria might be looking like a bargain at 27 million. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but that was a very, very good performance from him. He looked so composed on the ball, getting the ball out of tight spaces. Passes were not all the way there, but a lot of them were very good. It's just sometimes the Manchester City press is too strong. And we saw that a lot, especially through the first half. It's just, it's just that's the issue though. We are just a first half team. The way Chelsea start out games or the way Chelsea grow into games is never the way that we finish. And we're never able to sustain a dominant performance throughout a full 90 minutes. They went, Man City went into the dressing room at half time and Pep Guardiola probably just told them, if you lot don't come back here with three points, you're all walking home. Like, we're Chelsea. We aren't the same Chelsea from before. They shouldn't be drawing nil-nil at that point. But they didn't look good. They didn't look good, and that was because of the way we set up defensively, which was decent from us. Um, Kai Havertz. I thought Kai Havertz um, was very good defensively. I thought there was actually some decent passes from him, like the one to Chaku Mecca that he hit the post. But there was other phases where he's just so weak and he's so timid. And then it's like he's actually beefing Aubameyang sometimes because he just completely ignores him when he's in position. I saw Aubameyang in like 20 yards of space in the first half and, and Havertz is just spraying the ball left and right. And 
these are the little things that kill us off because we need to be more decisive through the centre and we never really are. We always like to play the ball out wide as opposed to playing it through the middle and it, it just kills us. It kills us. But we went into the first half kind of confident. The Chelsea team got applauded out for half time, which is the first time I've heard that happen in ages. But the second half came through and it was just the same old. We went right back into our shells. City were a lot stronger. We were looking a lot more sloppy on the ball. We were struggling to play out the City press. But we were still holding on. Haaland was invisible. Absolutely invisible. He had like two free chances and he sent every single one of them wide. He had a very poor performance today. But that's the thing with City is that they don't just rely on Haaland. They rely on a bunch of other players as well on top of it. Um, the goal, like, I look at that more at Kepper if I look at anybody else. Because the ball just gets sprayed across the edge of goal. And it's like he's indecisive. He doesn't know whether to dive to it. He doesn't know whether to leave it. And you can't be indecisive in those sorts of moments. Because City are going to punish you. And they did it exactly in that sort of game. And as soon as they got the first goal, that was it. Heads were down. We were never coming back at that sore point anyway. You know the way Chelsea Man City games go. They're usually just one goal games. But, and that's the thing that hurts the most. It's like as soon as you get a little bit of hope, as soon as the team gives you a little bit of a rise, we get sent straight back down into the mud again. After that, there was a couple pop shots. Lewis Hall had a good chance towards the end of the game. Kovacic had a decent chance at the edge of the box, but they all got sprayed wide. But we were never coming back at that point. City know how to see a game out once they have a winning position. They've done it enough times against us. They've done it enough times in the league. We already know the way that that's going. It was just, it was just kind of a golfing class, in, to be honest, because even when City, when we were playing well in the first half, it was because we were keeping by. It was because we were managing to hold on. Like we'd lose the ball and then we'd win it back and then we'd try and push it forward. Then we'd lose it again and then we'd win it back again. We were minimising their options very well defensively and that worked to our benefit. But it just wasn't enough. And this is why we're just not at that level to really compete for everything because we will play with our best. We will put our best onto the table, but our best just isn't enough. It isn't enough and we need to see a lot more in terms of reinforcements into the squad. Obviously, the Enzo Fernandez deal failing to go through is a kick in the teeth, but we need other midfielders in. We might be needing to go for wingers. Even though I said on today's stream we should not be going for wingers. Now, we might have two wingers out. So our hands might be tied. We might be putting 80 million into the Mudrick bank or something like that. Unless he, uh, if he didn't even watch the game. Because if he did, he probably doesn't want to join us. But yeah, we, we have lost another game. We dropped more points. We are further off the top four race. Further off the top six race. Um, we'll discuss this in deeper thoughts on the stream tomorrow. We'll be live at around 2.33 p.m. And yeah, I'm just going to sleep this one off. At least we didn't get battered. We went down swinging. And if that doesn't say how far we've dropped, then I don't know what does. But big up everyone that's locked in. Like, subscribe, and as always, up the Chelsea.